Hello, beautiful people. Now, it is officially winter here in the south of France. It was minus one degree when I got up this morning. For Americans, I don't know what that calculates to Fahrenheit, but just very cold. So I have my hot cocoa here ready to warm me a little bit. But in the meantime, I wanted to continue on and pick up from where we left off last week. So if you don't know already, my name is Miranda Ayim and I am a two-time Olympian with Team Canada. And last week I shared my experience with performance anxiety, where it all started, some unhelpful coping mechanisms, and some flashbacks that I've had since. So I didn't want to just leave you guys with that because it was kind of just describing the problem. Uh, which I think is helpful. That is one part of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to speak my flaws and failures and share those with you so it kind of peels back those layers of shame that we usually associate with those kind of situations. But the second part of my mission is to also take those flaws and failures and turn them into powerful opportunities for growth. And that's where this week's video comes into play because I'll be sharing some of what I do when that performance anxiety wants to start creeping back into my everyday life. Okay, so I think I told you guys somewhere, maybe on Instagram, that I had a lot to stay, say about this topic and I filmed a lot. I think what I included in the final video was only about half of what I actually filmed. So the rest of it will be in this video today. And I just wanted to share some of those more practical tools to maybe help you out when you're in a situation, a similar situation yourself. So some of it may seem a little macro and maybe even a little philosophical, but if you stick to the end and implement some of the suggestions, you might just see a little bit of a change because I myself have implemented an approach like this in my own life and I have seen tremendous change. So let's get into it. Now when I'm talking about performance anxiety, I'm not talking about your typical stage fright where you maybe get dry mouth, little sweaty palms and that type of thing. No, what I'm talking about is when you are literally unable to do things that you should be able to do. Like with my example in basketball, I was physically unable to do what I had been trained to do for years. Stuff that should simply be muscle memory, second nature, I was unable to do because of that anxiety just coursing through my veins. Now throughout those years, I have tried a slew of different techniques and exercises to help me work through those feelings, whether emotionally or physically, to help my performance and improve my reaction. Now there are quite a few that have helped me, but most of that has been pretty temporary. They'll maybe work for a game or two or maybe even longer. And then I find myself falling back into the same situation, the same feelings. So my techniques for helping myself have ranged quite broadly. Like I mentioned before, I had some poor techniques for coping with that, going out and drinking every weekend and whatever else that entails um, and then there's been some like middle of the road type techniques that would be beneficial but can sometimes be quite temporary if you don't pair them correctly so that's like breathing techniques or visualization maybe journaling some of the most effective techniques that I have come across is practicing mindfulness as well as talk therapy. So that's talking with a professional who actually knows what they're talking about and how they can help you in reframe situations. Now somehow over the years through trial and error or experience or retrospect, I've come to a point where the effects are dramatically less. It's a bit annoying because I can't give you like top five tips and tricks of how to get through performance anxiety because it is not that simple. Like I've tried those quick fixes, I've tried those quick tips of something that can help in the moment and get me through. Some of those things work, most of it is pretty temporary. Lasting results really come from the deep work that you do. 
I like to do a simple thought experiment where you imagine that you are alone in the world, standing there, maybe butt naked in the Garden of Eden, you're just chilling, living your life. Would you have the same issues and anxiety and stress all alone in the world as you do now? The answer is probably no because most of what we're worried about and anxious about is what other people either think about us or certain expectations that we're trying to live up to or a certain ideal that we're trying to live up to. And this is why I talk so much about defining success for yourself and finding what is valuable to you. That's when you get control over the attention that you are giving things. And that's an important key in performance anxiety because in performance anxiety, a lot of what we're doing and a lot of what is going wrong is putting attention on the incorrect thing. For me, in my example that I just gave, I started getting wrapped up in everything around me. I was thinking about what other people were thinking. I was worried about not playing well. I was worried about catching a ball. But really, my focus simply should have just been on getting myself better and doing what I needed to do to heal myself in that moment. Even though you're focusing on yourself, you're doing the world a favor as well. Because when you focus on yourself and you build yourself up and you are feeling good and you're focused on what needs to be done and what is valuable to you, that's gonna spill over into your life and positively affect your circle around you and, and it will just go out from there. And when we build that foundation, you can then integrate those other techniques that I was talking about, some mindful techniques, those breathing techniques that are useful in those smaller moments when you're dealing with anxiety and you feel that in your body and it needs to be taken care of on a physical level and a mental le level immediately. But then you also have that more durable foundation to put those techniques on so then it gives you a more lasting effect. Hey there, so what did you think? I personally am a type of person who really thrives on putting things into a new perspective and reframing situations. So some of the techniques that I explained today have really, really helped me, but I'd really like to hear what you guys think. Does that reframing help you put a new shift or perspective on your stress or your anxiety or what you're going through? I'd love to hear what you guys think. Please reach out, connect with me, either here in the comments with a like or a comment comment or connect with me on social media. Usually Instagram is the best. You can follow me at Miranda Joy Beyond. But I would love to hear what you guys think. And in the meantime, continue cultivating your best you.